My volcano Polidarium is officially 700 days old. It has become an ever-evolving ecosystem with a variety of different life. Each organism has etched out a unique lifestyle in their own little corner of this vast ecosystem. In the water and on the land, no day is the same as the one that came before it. The hierarchy of the polydarium is as follows. The small organisms get eaten by the larger ones, and at the top of the food chain is the poison dart frog. One of the most exciting things to witness is the poison dart frog mating ritual. It all starts with the male calling a female. He really serenaded this female and she can't resist. You can tell which one the female is because she's got a wider body. Once a female has chosen her mate, they'll head off into the leaves where the magic will happen. A few days later, they'll find an adequate spot to lay their eggs, usually out of sight and out of mind. I've noticed that they really like to do that on the edge of my tank where the foam is. They usually lay a clutch of three eggs at a time, and after about a week or two, you'll start to see the tadpoles forming out of the embryo. Once the tadpoles have finished developing, the male dart frog will actually carry them on his back. This is called a tad pack or tadpole backpack. He'll do this for several days until he finds an adequate water source to deposit the tadpoles, usually a small puddle or in the center of a bromeliad. When the tadpoles are deposited in a suitable water source, they'll hang out there and chill for a little bit, eating micro and biofilm and even fish food flakes that I provide for them. The smaller tadpoles gotta be careful though, because the bigger, more developed tadpoles will try to eat them if given the chance. They do prefer an easier meal, however, so as long as I stay on top of adding the fish food in, the smaller tadpoles should be alright. After about a month and a half to two months, the frogs start to develop legs and slowly start to dissolve their tail before hopping out and starting their life as a frog. Once in a while, I get algae blooms on the glass if I'm not on top of wiping it off with paper towels and I have to take a razor blade to it. It usually only takes me less than five minutes, so it's really not that big a deal. And then I hit it with the paper towel and it's back to looking as good as new. I also stay on top of adding leaf litter on the terrarium floor. This is important for all of the insects that live in here such as this powder orange isopod, which is part of the cleanup crew. Or this assortment of springtails. There's orange springtails as well as mini purple isopods. One of the unwelcome guests is this slug here, which when I see them, I pick them out and feed them to my cherry head tortoise who loves a good slug snack. I also got this assortment of bromeliads from frogdaddy.net. These are an awesome plant to have for thumbnail dart frogs like I have in the enclosure. The dart frogs love to hide in between the leaves, especially because it holds water really well, particularly in the center of the bromeliad. There was just one small problem, however. My terrarium had become completely overgrown, and I decided that I would trim out one side of it where I could plant all the bromeliads. This can be some kind of tedious work, especially because all the vining plants are intertwined and my dart frogs love to hang out on the leaves, so I gotta be sure that I don't accidentally snip one out of here. When I was finally finished, I had quite the pile of different plants that I'd cut out of there. I always double check just to make sure that there aren't any frogs hiding in there before I get rid of them. Then I got to work placing the bromeliads in here. 
Some of the bromeliads have a hard stem that you can just stick into different crevices and they'll grow there nicely. You don't want to let the roots get too wet or else they'll actually rot. It was definitely a much cleaner look. I also went ahead and topped off with some more oak leaf litter just to really tie it all together. I also gave the whole enclosure a nice misting down, really focusing on the center of the bromeliads, and it didn't take long until the dart frogs found their new home. As far as feeding the dart frogs, I have cultures of flightless fruit flies that I breed. I supplement the flies with a dusting of Rapashi Calcium Plus and Rapashi Super Pig. I feed the flies every morning and I start by knocking some of the flies into a jar where I then dust them with some calcium. I only add the super pig powder about once every 10 days. I drop them in through the mesh top and they'll disperse throughout the polydarium where they will inevitably meet their fate. In order to make sure that the flies don't escape, I like to place a little piece of banana in the front of the tank to keep all the flies in one area. The smell of the banana will attract the flies, which will in turn attract the frogs. And then I can get great shots of the frogs eating as well. So it's a double bonus. If the flies have enough time to hang out on the banana before the frogs can get to them, I end up with thousands of fruit fly larvae. But that's just another bonus snack for the frogs who really love the larvae. Another one of those fan favorites of the frogs is the orange springtails. I have a colony of orange springtails that I keep for this purpose, and any of the springtails that the frogs don't eat will just become part of the cleanup crew. Something really interesting that I noticed lately, which is no doing of my own, is that there is a colony of ants that somehow found their way in here. They like to hang out underneath this piece of cork bark where they also keep their eggs. They're a welcome guest in my terrarium though. It's just another added cleanup crew and it's also a great little snack for my frogs. So I leave them alone to do their thing. A really interesting product I stumbled upon lately is the clay bath from frogdaddy.net. It's a mixture of clay and essential minerals that the frogs can absorb through their skin, keeping them very healthy and very happy. All I gotta do is add some of the mixture with some distilled water, give it a good stir and place it in my polydarium and wait for the frogs to take a little dip. It's almost like bringing an in-home spa to the frogs and they seem to really like it because they all hang out by the mud when I place it in there. When the frogs go for a little splash, they'll actually absorb the minerals through their skin. They do track the clay all over the terrarium, however, 
but that's nothing that can't be fixed with a quick misting down of distilled water. All in all, my volcano polydarium with my poison dart frogs has been a huge success. All the plants and all the vibrance that they provide is something that I love to enjoy daily. You definitely want to check out my video simulating an island with my vampire crabs.